प्लीज मिस्टर डेप्यूटी चेयरमैन सर आई राइज टू स्पीक ऑन द कॉम्पेंसेटरी एफॉरेस्टेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड प्लानिंग अथॉरिटी बिल द बिल हैज फाइनली कम फॉर कंसिडरेशन एंड पैसेज एंड बिफोर आई गेट इन टू द बिल आई लाइक टू कंग्रेचुलेट द न्यू मिनिस्टर हु हैज जस्ट टेकन ओवर and within days of taking over he is piloting a very important bill which has very important implications for environmental and ecological security of our country so we, he was as i have described him earlier the ideal chairman for every select committee along with mr bupender yadav i would have been happier had this bill been referred to a select committee he was of course become the minister Mr Bhupender Yadav could have chaired it many of the concerns that i am going to express could have been settled in the select committee because it had not been considered by a standing committee and i acknowledge that i acknowledge that failure of due diligence however that was not to be and today we are discussing this bill i will be supporting the bill but i will be proposing an important amendment to the bill and i would request the leader of the house and the minister concerned to give serious consideration uh, to this amendment so campa as it is called has a long history it goes back to 2002 when the supreme court ordered the establishment of a compensatory afforestation fund In April 2004 the then government established a campa authority a compensatory afforestation management and planning authority so in 2008 if i recall right in march 2008 the then government brought a bill to establish the institutions to implement the compensatory afforestation fund this bill was referred to a select committee that select committee a uh, standing committee that standing committee was chaired by my very good friend who unfortunately has had to see distress migration from the front row to the back row dr maitreyan was the chairman of that standing committee that standing committee comprehensively rejected the bill that had been proposed in march of 2008 however the government came forward with the bill it passed in the lok sabha it did not pass in the rajya sabha and the matter then rested there so i had the privilege of becoming the environment and forest minister on the 29th of june 2009 and the first thing i did was to discover that there was 10000 crores that had accumulated in the compensatory afforestation fund so how did this accumulation take place every time a forest area is diverted for non forest purposes a certain fund certain amount of money has to be deposited by the government by public sector companies by private companies to carry out compensatory afforestation and i discovered in june 2009 that the total amount of money that had accumulated was 10000 crores and this was not being utilized so i went to the supreme court i had to deal with the central empowered committee i had to deal with an active supreme court and i also had to deal with a very aggressive amicus curiae mr harish salve who was advising the supreme court green bench and after 3 months of discussion with the supreme court a compromise formula was arrived at and the formula was this that every year 1000 crores would be released to the state governments and after a period of 4 or 5 years there would be a review of this 
arrangement and thereafter a decision would be taken. So I am pleased to inform you that in the first year, 2009-2010, 983 crores was actually released to state governments, Odisha, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra were big beneficiaries of this transfer. In the next year, 2010-2011, 1100 crores was then transferred to the state governments. So sir, up to now, about 8500 crores has actually been transferred under the CAMPA account to the state governments. However, the corpus has increased because forests are being diverted for coal mining, for irrigation projects, for power plants, for national highways. And what was 10,000 crores in 2009 has become 42,000 crores today. So I am glad that this 42,000 crores is now going to be transferred to the state governments in our formula, which is heavily weighted in favor of states. I think 90-10 is what is being proposed for the net present value. So what this bill does, let us be very clear. This bill empowers state governments. This bill strengthens forest departments. This bill gives an opportunity for a Twitter tomorrow morning, which says, for, not tomorrow, because the bill will continue tomorrow, maybe day after tomorrow, which says that 42,000 crores has been transferred to states. But what the bill does not do is empower forest dwellers. What the bill does not do is empower tribal communities. What the bill does not do is empower Gram Sabhas. What the bill does not do is empower communities. So let's be very clear. The bill transfers money to the states where it legitimately belongs because forest is a concurrent subject. It is legitimately transferred to the states. Forest departments, which have traditionally been starved of funds, get more funds for compensatory afforestation and other activities. So to that extent, I welcome this bill. Sir, what is my problem with this bill? My problem with this bill is that in one line, this bill ignores the Forest Rights Act of 2006. The Forest Rights Act, which is officially known as the Scheduled Tribes and Other Traditional Forest Dwellers Recognition of Rights Act 2006, was passed by both houses of parliament with great enthusiasm. To let tell my friend Mr. Derek O'Brien that his leader was one of the greatest votaries of the Forest Rights Act because it was felt that the Forest Rights Act was the first time in independent India that historical injustices on tribal communities was being corrected and that the Forest Rights Act of 2006 overrode the colonial era Indian Forest Act of 1927. And everybody welcomed it unanimously. But today, sir, today, I'm afraid we are doing bypass surgery on the Forest Rights Act. There is no explicit provision for the Forest Rights Act in this bill. And I'm very sorry to say that the Tribal Affairs Minister should have been present here when this bill was being discussed. He may be held up elsewhere, I have no problem. But his absence reflects the dissonance that exists between the Ministry of Environment and Forests on the one hand and the Ministry of Tribal Affairs on the other. 
So the Forest Rights Act was passed in 2006, in December 2006. And the Forest Rights Act confers two rights on forest dwellers, individual rights and community rights. Both individuals, individual families get rights of ownership and communities get rights of ownership. And in the last six, seven, eight years that it has been implemented, so let me point out that roughly, roughly 17 lakh individual titles have been distributed and roughly 49,000 community titles have been distributed. However, sir, these figures mask a different reality. Only 40% of the claims are actually converted into actual distribution of titles. That means out of every five people who apply for titles, only two get it. So it is a very high rate of rejection in state after state. In communities also, for community forest rights also, as I said, only about 45,000 community titles have been distributed, whereas something like one and a half lakh titles were claimed. So, Bhupinder Ji, these are all the websites, these are all the mantras, these are not my mantras, I will authenticate and keep them on the table. And it is, these are official figures as of April 2016, when this government is in power. But I'm not making a political point. I'm not saying we did this and you did that. I'm just saying that there has been a very high rate of rejection of claims, number one. And number two, the Forest Rights Act has failed miserably in recognizing community forest rights. Only 45,000 community forest rights have been distributed, whereas it has been estimated, it has been estimated that there are, this is only about 2% of the total community forest rights that could have been distributed. So while on individual rights we may have done well, on community rights, we have failed miserably. So what am I proposing in this bill? I have circulated an amendment and I appeal to all political parties. I appeal to my friend Derek O'Brien, whose leader championed the Forest Rights Act. I appeal to my good friends in the left parties who were associated with the passage of the Forest Rights Act. And I really urge even the Treasury benches because the Forest Rights Act was passed unanimously and enthusiastically. My amendment is very simple, sir. My amendment says that CAMPA funds will be used only in consonance with the implementation of the Forest Rights Act. Gram Sabha ke anumati ke bina Kempa ka paisa istimal nahi hoga. Jaha Kempa ka paisa istimal hoga, waha jo patte hai, jo adhikar hai, vyakti ka adhikar hai, or jo samuhi ka adhikar hai, unka pechan hona anivarya hai. Iske bina Kempa ka paisa rajyo ko jayega, par iska istimal nahi ho paaye. Sir, the Forest Rights Act, as I said, gives two types of rights. Incidentally, sir, you must change the seating arrangement. We must have some desks in front where we can keep all this. So the Forest Rights Act gives forest rights and community rights. However, the anchor of the Forest Rights Act is the Gram Sabha. Anybody who reads the Forest Rights Act 
the foundation of the Forest Rights Act is the Gram Sabha. The Gram Sabha has the responsibility for certifying the titles. The Gram Sabha has an essential role in the implementation of this act, section 6 of the Forest Rights Act of 2006 very clearly stipulates what the role of the Gram Sabha is. So in 2013, I had the privilege of piloting the right, the right to fair compensation and transparency in Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act Bill 2013, which became the new land acquisition law, in the drafting of which in the finalization of which the leader of the opposition and now leader of the House played a very active role, a role which he now, of course, would wish to disown. However, sir, in this act as well, the limited point I want to make, we may have differences on the implementation of this act. The limited point I want to make is that even in this act, without the permission of the Gram Sabha, no land acquisition takes place in forest areas. So whether it is the Forest Rights Act of 2006, or whether it's the Land Acquisition Act of 2013, passed by both houses of parliament, the Gram Sabha's role is fundamental. And that is why the amendment that I have moved says that CAMPA funds shall be used only after the permission of the Gram Sabha. Tirki ji, Odisha mein Palli Sabha hai. Aap jante hai. Vaha Gram Sabha Palli Sabha hai. Aur is amendment ke dwara, mein aap se bhi nivedan karta hoon. Kyunki aap, aap ke mukhe mantri bar bar kehte rehte hai ki hum adivasi ke paksh mein hai. Hum tribal ke sarkar hai. अगर पल्ली सभा का नजरअंदाज किया जाएगा, अगर पल्ली सभा की कोई भूमिका नहीं रहेगी, तो क्या रहे, क्या बाकी रहेगा? कैंपा का पैसा राज्यों को मजबूत करेगा, कैंपा का पैसा फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को और मजबूत करेगा, पर कौन भुगतेगा? अगर ग्राम सभा का नजरअंदाज किया गया है, अगर ग्राम सभा का कोई रोल नहीं है और फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट का इंप्लीमेंटेशन नहीं होगा तो कैंपा लागू होने से क्या फायदा तो मेरा कहना यही है कैंपा का इस्तेमाल जरूर होना चाहिए पर कैंपे का इस्तेमाल तभी होना चाहिए जब ग्राम सभा अनुमति देगी और ग्राम सभा कहेगी कि यह सही है यह हमारे अनुमति से हो सकता है तो ग्राम सभा has been brought as part of my amendment and I request the honorable minister to accept this amendment and take credit for the amendment I have absolutely no problem because all that the amendment does is to sir I said at the beginning I need time sir sir you are I'm allotted, sorry sir this you is, are I need time. allotted 30 and I minutes and I told the honorable minister also I need time Sir, your party allotted so 30 time, minutes, please. but you have five I'm, speakers. I am prepared to sit here till midnight, but I need some time. So please don't ring the bell, sir. The amendment has been brought. I request the, on, the Treasury benches to accept the amendment in the spirit with which it has been brought to solve a major problem, tomorrow, tomorrow. a dichotomy between the Forest Rights Act and the use of CAMPA funds. So why am I saying so much on the Forest Rights Act? Why am I putting so much emphasis on the Forest Rights Act? And I want to give three examples, just three examples, recent examples. The first example, sir, is from Chhattisgarh. Netanji, Sarguja Zile ke, Ghatbara gaon hai. आप तो पूरी तरह जब जानते हैं पूरी जानकारी आपके पास है घटबरा गांव है सरगुजा जिला है छत्तीसगढ़ राज्य है छत्तीसगढ़ के राज्य सरकार ने 
एक अध्यादेश जारी किया है कि घटबरा गांव के सारे सामूहिक अधिकार कैंसिल किया जाएगा क्यों क्योंकि वहां किसी कंपनी को कोयले का ठेका दिया रखा हुआ है मैं कंपनी का नाम नहीं लूंगा और उस कोल माइन का एलोकेशन मैंने किया था जब मैं मंत्री था मैं वो भी स्वीकारता हूं और यह एलोकेशन हुआ था राजस्थान की सरकार के नाम पर राजस्थान की सरकार ने इस निजी कंपनी को माइन ऑपरेटर के रूप में उनको काम करवाया और अभी छत्तीसगढ़ सरकार कहती है और सारे कागजात मेरे पास हैं दवे जी आप देख सकते हैं सरगुजा जिले में घटबरा गांव में छत्तीसगढ़ सरकार ने सारे सामूहिक अधिकार कैंसिल कर दिया है क्योंकि वहां बड़ा कोयले का भंडार है और इस निजी कंपनी को चाहिए कि बिना अधिकार पहचान किए हुए ये माइनिंग शुरू करें ये फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट के खिलाफ है और अगर आज छत्तीसगढ़ में हुआ है तो कल मध्य प्रदेश में होगा गुजरात में होगा तेलंगाना में तो तेलंगाना तो बीजेपी की सरकार नहीं है झारखंड में होगा सब महाराष्ट्र में होगा जहां कहीं बीजेपी की सरकार है यह होना जरूरी है तो पहला मिसाल मंत्री जी मैं जो आपके सामने रख रहा हूं कागजात के जरिए कि जो छत्तीसगढ़ में हुआ है जो कम्युनिटी फॉरेस्ट राइट्स कैंसिल किए गए हैं सरगुजा में वो और राज्यों को एक रास्ता दिखाता है और अगर यही होता रहा तो कम्युनिटी फॉरेस्ट राइट्स का पहचान होना ही असंभव है कोई गुंजाइश नहीं दूसरा मिसाल मैं महाराष्ट्र से लेता हूं महाराष्ट्र सरकार ने अभी अभी एक गजट नोटिफिकेशन निकाली है और इसकी सारी कॉपी मैं आपको देता हूं मंत्री जी इसमें कोई राजनीति नहीं है यह सब सरकारी कागजात है और महाराष्ट्र सरकार ने 18 जून को गजट नोटिफिकेशन निकाला है और इस गजट नोटिफिकेशन का नाम है विलेज फॉरेस्ट रूल्स और इस विलेज फॉरेस्ट रूल्स के तहत यह कहा गया है कि फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को अधिकार है कम्युनिटी फॉरेस्ट राइट्स छीनने के लिए एक तरफ हम कानून बनाते हैं हम कहते हैं कि व्यक्तिगत पट्टे हम देंगे सामूहिक पट्टे देंगे और दूसरी तरफ राज्य सरकार एक अध्यादेश निकालती है जो जिसके जिसके अनुसार ये अधिकार दिया जाता है फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को कि कम्युनिटी फॉरेस्ट राइट्स आप ले सकते हैं 11 अप्रैल 2011 को मैं खुद गढ़चिरौली जिले में गया था और गढ़चिरौली में एक गांव का नाम है मेंडा लेखा जावड़ेकर जी जानते हैं वो अच्छी तरह से उनकी जानकारी है मेंडा लेखा में मेंडा लेखा हमारे देश का पहला गांव बना जहां बास की जिम्मेदारी जो फॉरेस्ट की भाषा में ट्रांजिट पासबुक कहा जाता है उसकी जिम्मेदारी फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट से लेकर हमने ग्राम सभा की सौंपी मेंडा लेखा में एक गोंड बुजुर्ग थे देवाजी तोहफा और उन्होंने कहा हम लोगों से सब दिल्ली मुंबई में हमारी सरकार मेंडा लेखा में हम ही सरकार और इसलिए ये बास की जिम्मेदारी ग्राम सभा को सौंपी गई और ग्राम सभा को पिछले दो सालों में मंत्री जी एक करोड़ रुपए की आमदनी हुई है क्योंकि बास कागज के मिलों में इस्तेमाल होता है और कई औद्योगिक उद्योग में इस्तेमाल होता है और इस विलेज फॉरेस्ट रूल से दरवाजा खुल गया है कि ग्राम सभा को आप अभी कोई अधिकार नहीं दे पाएंगे फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट का नियंत्रण बरकरार रहेगा और कम्युनिटी फॉरेस्ट राइट्स जो मेंडा लेखा जैसे गांव में ग्राम सभा को सौंपे गए थे 
वो अभी फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट के पास ही रहेगा तीसरा मिसाल पहला छत्तीसगढ़ का हुआ जहां सी एफ आर कैंसिल किए गए कोल माइनिंग के लिए दूसरा मिसाल महाराष्ट्र में दूसरा मिसाल था महाराष्ट्र में जहां विलेज फॉरेस्ट रूल्स निकाले गए हैं जो कंट्रोल फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट से लेकर ग्राम सभा को दिया गया था वो वापस फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को लौटाया जाएगा और तीसरा मिसाल मैं हमारे केंद्रीय मंत्रालय की एक जो गाइडलाइन है जो जावड़ेकर जी ने निकाला था उसका मैं जिक्र करना चाहता हूं 11 अगस्त 2015 और ये गाइडलाइंस है पीपीपी पीपीपी सर आई एम नॉट यील्डिंग सर आई एम नॉट यील्डिंग आई एम नॉट यील्डिंग आई एम नॉट यील्डिंग दिस इज अ गाइडलाइन इशूड बाय द मिनिस्ट्री आई एम नॉट सेइंग बाय मिनिस्टर बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायर सर मिनिस्ट्री इज अ कंटिन्यूइंग एंटिटी मिनिस्टर्स कम एंड गो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड फॉरेस्ट on 11th of august 2015 for private participation in forest areas nijikaran ka darwaza khul gaya ek taraf hum kehte hain ppp fail ho gaya aur dusri taraf hum ppp ko nimantran dete hain aaiye hamare jangal zameen mein kaam kijiye ये निजीकरण का रास्ता जो खोला गया है ये खतरनाक है और ये एक और मिसाल है कि फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट एक बार फिर इस गाइडलाइन के माध्यम से इग्नोर हो इसका नजरअंदाज किया जाएगा आखिर में हाउ लॉन्ग यू वॉन्ट टू स्पीक मिस्टर टेन मिनट सर But your time is total time is only thirty minutes. Seven o'clock. Sir, thirty minutes. Sir, I was told. You have five, you have five speakers. Sir, I was told seven. Sir, I was told seven o'clock. I am going to complete at seven o'clock. Sir. Sir, I am prepared to sit here till midnight. But you, I am prepared. You also sit. You also sit. जिंग एंड सपोर्टिंग कम्युनिटी लेड एफोरेस्टेशन एफर्ट्स the most successful examples of sustainable forestry in our country is community led afforestation and there is no mention of that in the bill there is no mention as i said of the gram sabha and the panchayats and the committees that have been proposed and my colleague digvijay singh ji will be speaking about this the committees that have been proposed both at the national level and at the state level are stacked very heavily in favor of bureaucrats and civil servants and not enough of people who have actual experience with afforestation sir i'm sure the honorable minister will agree he is a dedicated environmentalist himself main vishwas rakhta hu ki wo mujhse sehmat honge कि कैंपा का पैसा ज्यादातर एफॉरेस्टेशन के लिए नहीं पर रीजेनरेशन ऑफ नेचुरल फॉरेस्ट के लिए जाना चाहिए सर ये हमारे मन में जो पैदा हो गया है कि हम फॉरेस्ट को डाइवर्ट कर सकते हैं पर अब कॉम्पेंसेटरी एफॉरेस्टेशन कर सकते हैं ये गलत है एक तरफ हम नेचुरल फॉरेस्ट को डिस्ट्रॉय कर रहे हैं और यह मानना कि हम कहीं यूकलिप्टस का प्लांटेशन लगा के वो कॉम्पेंसेट करेंगे ये बिल्कुल गलत विचार है तो मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि मंत्री जी जोर देंगे 
रीजनरेशन ऑफ नेचुरल फॉरेस्ट पर और कम प्राथमिकता वो देंगे एफॉरेस्टेशन के बारे में सर अंत में मैं यही कहूंगा कि ये संशोधन है मैं सबसे विनती करता हूं कि ये संशोधन का समर्थन करें और मैं खास तौर से दवे जी से दरखास्त करूंगा कि जब वो रूल्स बनाएंगे रूल्स तो बनना ही है जब वो रूल्स बनाएंगे विस्तार से बनाएं, डिटेल में जाएं और विचार विमर्श के बाद ही आप रूल्स बनाएं। हम नहीं मैं नहीं कहता हूं उसकी सिर्फ सांसदों से बात करें पर कई संगठन हैं जो आपके साथ भी संपर्क में हैं, आप भी जानते हैं जो इस विषय पर बहुत जानकारी है उनको और उनसे भी सुझाव लें मैं जानता हूं कि आप जल्दी में हैं इस विधेयक को पास करने में पास हो जाएगा आप बेफिक्र रहिए आपकी इनिंग्स एक सिक्सर से शुरू हो रही है और हेडलाइन भी मिल जाएगा 42,000 टू थाउजेंड क्रोर्स ट्रांसफर टू द स्टेट पर जल्दबाजी मत कीजिए संशोधन को स्वीकार कीजिए अगर संशोधन को आप स्वीकारेंगे नहीं तो रूल्स में तो जो संशोधन का मूल भूत असूल है उसको आप रूल्स में लाइए और रूल्स को विचार विमर्श के बाद ही आप तय कीजिए तो फिर से okay. मैं कहना चाहता हूं डिप्टी चेयरमैन साहब दैट आई सपोर्ट द बिल इट्स अ लिमिटेड सपोर्ट इट इज सपोर्ट based on a recognition that we need to unlock this campa problem after almost 10 years however the bill is a step in a direction of strengthening state governments and forest departments it does not strengthen communities it does not strengthen gram sabhas it does not strengthen the implementation of the forest rights act of 2006 and i make an earnest appeal to the honorable minister to give serious consideration to what i have said thank you sir okay all right